Welcome to all of you for this uh, webinar on mobility uh, Medita in the Mediterranean tourist destination. I'm uh, Antoine Clément from uh, Codatu, uh, and Codatu is a partner of the Urban Transport Community Partnership. In order to keep a good internet connection, I will ask you to cut your video and your microphone. And if you have any question, feel free to ask them in the chat box on the left on your screen. Um, here is the agenda of the webinar of today. We will start by a short opening explaining what is the UTC call and the UTC partnership. Then uh, thematic keynote presentation will be done by Morton Cabal, which is a mobility expert. Uh, then a focus keynote presentation will be done by, by Silvio Nocera. And this uh, intervention is until the tourism mobility in Mediterranean cities, insight, perspective, and conclusion from the Mobilitas project. Uh, that will be the first um, half of our webinar. The second half will be dedicated to the presentation of the solution done by the pioneer cities. What was the issues and what was done? We will start by the Zadranova development agencies and their solution until the cycle tourism improved by an app. Then we will present the Ravenna municipality and their solution uh, until the low carbon transport plan in cruise destination. And finally, we will present the solution done by Retimno Municipality and Tilted Electric Mobility Solutions for tourists and residents. And now, what is the urban transport community? The urban transport community is a community of seven territorial projects funded by the Interreg Med Program Framework uh, with more than 200 organizations implementing sustainable mobility solution in the 12 Euromed countries. Um, the UTC bring various actors such as uh, local and regional authorities, mobility operators, university, civil society, etc. Does it work? Yes. Um, there is seven partners involved in the UTC. The first of all is uh, MedCities, and they are the lead partner on this project. Then there is Unimed, Civitas, Area Science Park, Codatu. Police and then the municipality of Duras. You can see on the screen uh, all the communication channel of UTC, and you can also click on the links that will be shared in the chat box. Please note that if you don't have enough time to click on all the links, uh, they will be sending you uh, in the recap mail. So do not worry if you don't have time now. You will find all this information uh, later on within an email. Um, in order to present all the experience and tool used by the UTC, we organized a set of webinars from October 7 to November 25. And uh, here is now the agenda of all the webinars. And today you are attending to the 60th of the set. And please note that it's not too late to register to the two uh, other seminars that are uh, the seminar of the 18 November um, called Sustainable Urban Mobility Planning approach in Approaches pardon, in Mediterranean Cities and also to the last webinar of the 25 November called Electromobility Urban Planning Impacts of Technology Trends. What is the philosophy of the UTC partnership? Well, under the coordination of the urban transport community, the most innovative and engaged cities of our community, that we call here pioneer cities, will accompany other territories in developing and improving their own sustainable urban mobility solutions, what we call here replicating cities. All of this process will be facilitated by mentors selected by the community among professional mobility planners and practitioners. Uh, the pioneering cities of Today's webinar are uh, the following. Uh, the cycle tourism in Zadar. Uh, the Zadar County, sorry, with their um, cycle tourism solution. Then you will uh, find the Ravenna municipality with their low carbon transport plan. And finally, the municipality of Retimno with their electric mobility solution for tourists and residents. You can find more detail of all of the solution uh, on the Med Urban Toll website, when you, you can find the, um, the address, sorry, of the website just at the bottom of the slide. 
Um, well, uh, I invite you, I strongly invite you to visit the Med Urban Tune platform for knowing more about the today's presentation, but also for all the other solution that has been done by our, or by our pioneer cities. Uh, the solutions are classified by thematic and categories, and most of all, this platform is very intuitive and easy to use. So feel free to go there if you want to have more info on the global project. Then, now let's talk about the call for sustainable urban transport implementing cities. Because we are now looking at, because now, sorry, yes, the partnership we are looking at implementing cities. Well, uh, what is the call about? Uh, it's a peer learning opportunity offered by the urban transport community to southern, southern European cities to overcome some of the obstacle to the full implementation of sustainable mobility solutions. There's our main topics. Uh, the main topics are the data and ICT for smart traffic management, the soft mobility, the shared mobility, the mobility management in tourist destination, and finally, the urban mobility planning. There is the different steps of the mentoring process. First of all, the pioneer entity shares knowledge with the replicator entity. The mentoring process uh, is supervised by an expert. Then the replicator entity meet, meets the pioneer entity at peer-to-peer -peer sessions. Um, then the stakeholders of replicating entities are consulted. And finally, the expert produce an adaptation and replication reports. So here we are for the big step of the peer-to-peer the peer -peer learning. Who can apply to the call? Well, this call is open to public and private entities with competencies uh, in urban transportation. So it can be municipalities, broader territories, development agencies, private company also, etc. It, it's really like really well open. You just have to have the right competence and then you're very welcome. Then what's our date to save uh, concerning the call? The um, application are welcome until 5 December 2020. Oh, sorry, there is a shift of my presentation. Yeah, so the welcome, the, the application are welcome until the 5 December 2020. The selection, the selection and the matching between the offer and the demand will be done by January 2021. And the peer-to-peer -peer session workshop will start at the next, the next uh, spring. And finally, the adaptation report that closed this set of uh, set will be done in autumn 2021. If you're interested to apply, you will find in the chat box the call, the call description and also all the links that could be useful, such as uh, the tailored support to prepare your candidature done by the help desk, um, and also all the, um, the updates that we are going to share on our communication channel. So one more time, do not be afraid if you don't have enough time to check all this link. We are gonna share them within a recap email. So here we are. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any question, please ask me in the chat box. And I don't know if it's the case for now. <laughs> well, and I will now pass the floor to Morten Cabal, which is the former mobility and environment mayor of Copenhagen and co-CEO of the European Cyclist Federation. He will be our mobility expert on two days, and he will present a speech on the challenges of the two sector of mobility and tourism. So please, Morten Cabal, uh, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you very much and good morning, everybody. It's an honor for me to uh, to be here. And as soon as I can share my screen, I will start doing so. Mm. Um, there it is. Well, my name is Morten Cabell. I'm, uh, as Antoine said, and thank you very much for the kind introduction. Um, I'm co-CEO today of the European Cyclists Federation, and I used to be mayor in the city of Copenhagen, responsible for technical environmental affairs, that is uh, mobility, climate, environment, uh, urban planning, urban design, all those issues that in Denmark is connected with what we call technical affairs, right down to cemeteries and utilities on each uh, end of the scale. 
mobility is a huge part of that. And as such, of course, I was one of the responsible for Copenhagen's transition of becoming uh, what is today called the world's best bicycling city with today more than 60% of everybody in Copenhagen commuting on bicycle. Yes, that's right, more than 60% every single day. But today my, my work is in Brussels. I'm uh, one of the two CEOs of the European Cyclist Federation. And um, the, uh, the European Cyclist Federation is the umbrella organization of both uh, transportation and leisure cycling. We work to achieve the full, to the fullest potential of cycling for sustainable mobility and for public well-being. And we believe that cycling is the answer to have healthier people, livable cities and sustainable economies. A key challenge for tourist areas and that regards also all of Europe or the whole continent and in that sense it affects all of our 76 members in all European countries, is the seasonability, tour, over tourism and congestion. That is some of the key challenges for tourist areas. This presents challenges in achieving smart and sustainable growth. Planning for cycling balances people, place and business. It offers the opportunity to meet the welfare of tourists and the local population, the needs and uses of the natural and cultural environment and the competitiveness of the destinations and its businesses. The specific challenges for cruise destinations and tourist destinations, well, they're known. They are um, that we have congestion caused by increased traffic of coaches and other, other motorized vehicles. These vehicles cause noise and air pollution that, uh, that negatively affects the health of the locals. And we know that, that, all, that the increased traffic also diminishes the safety of the area and severely affects the tr attractiveness of the areas. Well, I'm here to tell you that cycling is actually the answer to all these issues. The big picture, if we should start with that, that shows the huge benefits of cy that cycling can have. We made in 2018 a study that valued these benefits of around 150 billion euros per year for the European economy. Road congestion is one part. Road congestion is estimated across the continent to cost a staggering 270 billion euro for the economy of Europe every year. Cycling can reduce this, these costs by around 7 billion through congestion easing and another 3 billion through uh, savings on construction and maintenance costs of infrastructure for motorized vehicles. And we know that we can, we can have other savings and other benefits. We have almost six billions through emission saving, um, we, with over re, a reduction of over 16 million tons of CO2 every year. And the benefits for longer and healthier lives uh, can be estimated at just around 78 billion euros. Yes, 78 billion euros through its health benefits and fewer absences at workplace due to sickness. A recent study, not made by us, but made by the Danish Ministry of Transport and Housing found that every time a citizen cycles one kilometer, society saves a little more than one euro simply because the health benefits are so great. And a study commissioned by the European Parliament in 2012 estimated that there are over 2.2 billion cycle tourism trips every year and over 20 million overnight cycle trips made every year in Europe. These have an, econo an estimated economic impact of 44 billion euro. So this, the, this is not pennies. This is not cents we are talking about. This is huge money. And there are huge benefits to gain from this. This is in comparison to the uh, uh, cruise tourism industry, whose economic value is seen at, um, at 38 billion and 326,000 jobs. Well, you can see that the, the, the benefit here, 44 billion and, 40, and 525,000 jobs. There is a potential to achieve at least 850,000 jobs through cycle tourism throughout Europe. Not only that, but these jobs have the potential to create a more inclusive society where they occur through providing easily accessible employment for disadvantaged groups. 
Cycle tourism brings a lot of uh, specific benefits that can be exploited by, tu by tourist areas and that we would definitely advocate for. Cycle tourism brings in high spending tourists estimated to bring 20% more than the average for all tourists. Cycling tourism offers an opportunity for tourists to engage better in natural, cultural and historical destinations, simply because when you're on a bicycle, you're part of the local community. You're part of what you visit. You don't, don't sit in a metal box. You are on your bike. You're part of the area you visit and you interact and connect with the people that you visit. Cycle tourism uh, is therefore a lucrative business if you consider that nature that is the, the largest interest driving travel decisions. Cycling is an efficient and interactive and attractive form of sightseeing and can be experienced unspoiled from pollution and noise with, when accompanied with the right infrastructure. Cycle tourism, it's important to say, doesn't bring less tourism. It brings better tourism. In response to seasonability, uh, seasonality and over-tourism, cycling tourism has a possibility to be a 12-month season in Southern Europe, with bike tracks and bike routes open and attractive all year round. This is better for congestion. It's better for local economies spreading the benefits over the year. And it spreads the better benefits also over wider geographical areas, as cycle routes and can redirect tourists away from the congested areas, limiting wear on infrastructure, and decrease the negative effects on the local community. That will also make the local communities more positive to tourism, benefit again for the tourism sector. Not only that, but leisure cycling, as I said, is an entry into commuter cycling for local users. Tourist routes become recreation routes for weekend trips, and it becomes a daily nice infrastructure for all the commuters in the area, increasing the sustainability gains from this investment. In relation to the environmental impacts, cycle tourism offers enormous energy savings and reduced greenhouse gas emissions of between 50 and 80%. As I said, cycle holidays generate above air average revenues and the eco efficiency is several times higher than mainstream tourism. This means promoting cycle tourism will enhance both the environment and the economy. Better infrastructure means more cycling and cycling infrastructure is the key part or the key reason for having more people riding a bike. It was once said that if you build it, they'll come. That's a simple fact in, in urban development that we know from around the world, from Copenhagen, where 60% of more than 60% of the, of, the, uh, of the inhabitants actually today commute by bicycle to a city in Russia, Almetyevsk, that decided to go bicycle friendly a few years ago. The mayor decided he wanted bicycle lanes, Copenhagen style. Let's be honest, there wasn't a single Almetyevsk citizen on the bicycles when he decided to do so. 18 months later, I visited the city and now almost 10% of the population were riding a bicycle every single day. That meant an ease of congestion. It meant less air pollution, it meant less noise, and it meant that the city felt more healthy. People use it. If you build it, they'll come. The simple fact is that the basics need to be in place to reap all the benefits. The better the infrastructure, the more people that will be cycling. Cycling infrastructure needs to be attractive. It needs to be safe. It needs to feel safe. It needs to be comfortable for both the tourists and the local population. But then again, that means that it will enhance the quality, attractiveness, and image of the area through the pleasant, relaxed ride, free from motorized traffic. Executive Vice President of the European Commission, Franz Timmermans, is, is, uh, said a few weeks ago that in, investing in bike lanes is not a regrettable investment. That is the lesson learned from the European Commission. And the Celine Gower, the head of the European Commission Recovery and Silicence Task Force, said, also a few weeks ago at a webinar, bike lanes uh, are exactly the kinds of investment we want to see now that we have the resilience fund with a lot of lots of billions for countries and regions around Europe. They create 30% more jobs in construction than conventional road projects. So investing in bicycle infrastructure is actually also a way of creating more jobs than traditional infrastructure. 
So you get more jobs, safer infrastructure, less air pollution, less noise pollution, and you attract more tourists. I'm sorry to say this, but what's not to like? But they must be, uh, bike sharing is another possibility. Bike sharing is, is, is good for exploration and it makes it easy for the tourists in your area to, to, uh, to get around town. But the bike sharing schemes that should be located in central areas and at busy areas can increase the use of the bike, but they have to be well designed and well executed. When it is that, then it has great potential to remove cars from the streets in, in short journeys and assist, assist in overcoming seasonal strain on public transport. Again, something that will also be very popular for the local population. The sustainable benefits for medium and small cities have been found to be much higher than with public transport. And bike sharing increases the health of the citizens. We simply stay fit longer, we stay active longer, and it saves city money on costly car infrastructure. Thereby, it increases accessibility, attractiveness, image of the city, and the livability of the city at all. So bike sharing and smart docking can accommodate can accommodate tourists and arrival hotspots in order to deal with the heavy flows of tourists when needed. And imagine a parking spot, a parking, uh, sorry, a parking area where you have 100, 200 park, uh, by cars being parked. Imagine the same people riding, arriving there on a bicycle. They take up much less space, which means that less, uh, a, a lesser part of the precious nature in your area will have to be asphalted will have to be covered with tarmac. It means that the area looks more attract attractive and nice, and simply that it's also much more efficient. People don't have to walk half a kilometer from their car down to the uh, site. They can simply walk a few meters. That's a huge advantage for everybody, and it will mean that your area will be much more attractive than it was before. At the same time, we should embrace uh, digitalization in new technologies. We know already that 60% of all tourists are interested in engaging in biking on top of the 15% that are already eager enthusiasts. 60% of all, of all tourists, that's a lot. When I was mayor of Copenhagen, it was estimated that around 33 to 40% of all the tourists in Copenhagen came because of Copenhagen's bicycle friendliness. They wanted to experience what it was to be in a bike friendly city. That's a lot of tourists in Copenhagen. That's a lot of money being gained by a lot of revenue being gained by uh, hotels, restaurants, cafes, shops, and so on. 60% of tourists we know today are interested in biking. And e-bikes, when we uh, allow for that, and when we uh, also allow for the investment in, in proper infrastructure for e-bikes. They allow for longer distances to be cycled with the same level of effort compared to conventional bikes. A radius of 10 to 20 kilometers are now, is now easily achievable. That opens up more areas for tourist traffic. And furthermore, the time differences compared to cars are marginal. And in many ways, it's actually much faster to get around town, to get around the areas on an e-bike than it is in a car. You simply don't have the congestion to count with. That means that you can easily set out on your e-bike. You know when you're going to arrive. You don't have to, to be afraid of congestion. You don't have to be afraid of anything else than just getting there. That's a huge uh, advantage. And um, it also makes it, it with e-bikes, makes it very easy to overcome natural, natural obstacles to cycling, like hills or hip winds. Uh, and it assists to open up cycling to groups that may not previously have cycled because of the physical condition. That means, for instance, elderly tourists that suddenly now can, uh, can have an easier access also to the areas where you're in. So this assists your environmental and growth goals, both of them at the same time. So unlock the potential. Unlock this potential of cycling make an integrated strategy. Make sure you have attractive, safe, and comfortable infrastructure with complete and consistent signage. That is important so people know where they're going. Make sure there are good connections. 
Make sure you have high quality user-friendly services, including bike repairs, bike renting, mapping, safe parking, etc. One of the most successful brochures that the city of Copenhagen has published is publishing every year this is a bike map of Copenhagen, simply to make sure that the tourists and visitors to the city know where they are going. Make sure you have information and promotional tools. They need to be up to date. They need to be easily accessible. Uh, slow adventurers which seek out cyclings are the, mo are the modern internauts. They find and they book their destination predominantly via internet. Make sure that they can easily do so as well, also by uh, uh, on, on bicycle. But also constant monitor you, um, the uh, the in, uh, and identify the impacts and areas of improvement they need to make. The consistent monitoring is using bike counting technology and surveys to make sure that you can estimate where are people going, why what kind of infrastructure is needed. And also identify, identify the areas for improvement. That will very soon get your city or your region an, an, uh, an image of being bike friendly and friendly on the human scale. That is something that is being counted and that is something that goes viral. And finally, organization is paramount to coordinate and ensure successful implementation, operation and quality. There are lots of things to be done, but I can assure you the benefits are huge the benefits are there, both for your growth goals, for your environmental goals, for the global climate goals, and basically also to get more and better tourism. Thanks a lot. Back to you, Kimmel. Antoine. Well, thank you very much for your presentation, Mr. Cabell. Is there any question dedicated to the cycling as a solution for a tourism and mobility in Mediterranean cities? If there is so, please just write them in the chat box on the left of your screen. And if there is no question, I will now uh, introduce you Oh, maybe there is one. Okay, we're waiting. Apostolos Antonio's question is uh, one of the one of the ones one of those we have met the the most often one of those where that I also am pleased to uh, to actually answer a bicycle track a bicycle lane is five to seven times more efficient than a car lane is at every single time of day a bike lane can transport five to seven times more people than a car lane can the reason for that is simple the bike takes up so much less space than a car does. When I look out my window where I am now in here in Copenhagen, I'm back in Copenhagen for the week. I see in the morning, I see 10 to 12 cars out on the car lane waiting for red light, but I see 100 to 200 bikes on the same space. There is a huge advantage for having bicycle lanes compared to car lanes. So managing traffic by cars. Well, what's interesting here, that was the question of last century. How many cars can we get down the road? The question of this century is different. It is how many people can we transport on the road? And when we start answering that question, then we move into having the most efficient modes of transport. And those are bikes and public transport. Each of them can transport many, many times more people than a car can. And that means that a bus lane, a bus can transport many more people than a car lane can, and a bicycle lane can transport, as I said, five to seven times more people than a car lane can. So when you get bicycle infrastructure, probably, probably uh, built in your city, 
fewer people will be in their cars. And that means simply that you have less car traffic. And that means that you will have less congestion. Look at Copenhagen roads. If you see pictures of that, you'll see much less congestion than you will see in a comparable city of 2 million people around Europe, simply because people use bicycles instead of cars. So you'll have better traffic, not more car traffic, and you won't have more congestion. You will have better traffic management uh, at every single day. Luke asks about e-bikes. Uh, what is my experience? Well, um, I would say that the, uh, the, the, the main experience here is mostly to make sure that e-bikes are being charged. There are two different versions. Either the e-box has a battery that is uh, included in the, uh, the frame of the bike. That means that you need to have it uh, parked and charged uh, the whole bicycle. That can be done in the garage or other places. Or you can remove the battery and take it up to your flat or into your house and charge it. That's what I do myself uh, when I had an e-bike. Um, when I became mayor of Copenhagen, we sold the mayoral car and bought a mayoral e-bike instead. I brought the uh, the charger or the battery with me to my to my apartment or to my office, and then I charged it uh, during nighttime and, and during work. That made it very easy to charge the e-bike. And and again, a fully charged e-bike can easily transport you 100 kilometers. There are a few people who need more than that for the few hours it'll take, and a bicycle uh, battery is very easily charged. Um, of course, disposal is as uh, problematic. Uh, with batteries as it is with everything else that has batteries in it. So that should be done environmentally safe. But additional challenges? No, not really. Uh, it just gives you a much better range than you had before. Um, Laya asks about shared mobility schemes in tourist areas, which are the good practices to make it sustainable and time and efficient for public private budgets. Here, I think it's important to have a good uh, cooperation between the different mobility providers that may be providers of um, of public transport of uh, public bike sharing scheme to make sure that they are connected most of us use many types of mobility throughout a day and we also do that on a holiday that means that we may use a bus we may use a bicycle we are walking around uh, and we use maybe a car uh, or a taxi to get to and from the airport there are many ways uh, to use mobility every day. So have, uh, the, the good practices here is to make sure that things are connected. You have good bicycle parking at the local train station. That means that when you arrive at the airport, you take the, the train into town. There you can rent the bicycle easily uh, at the train station. One of the very good examples here are the Dutch cities like Utrecht, for instance, which has one of the most amazing bike parking scheme, but most Dutch cities actually have that. The Netherlands is today by far the leading in bicycle parking around Europe and the world. And they are the envy of everybody else uh, because they have been so consistent in making sure that you, you can have the systems all integrated. So it's easily go to go from A to B to C in your mobility choices. Make sure that you sit down and, and, and get your uh, different providers on board and make sure that that they can actually uh, coordinate and communicate. And interestingly enough, that will actually increase also the, the ticket sales for the public transport, making the public transport an economically much more viable and feasible option every day. And that's good for the local economy as well, when you don't have to subsidize the local buses or trains as much as you used to. Well, thank you very much for all of this answer, Mr. Cabal. Um, we will now pass to another presentation done by uh, Mr. Nocera. Mr. Nocera is a full professor of transport engineering and planning at the Department of Architecture and Arts at the Universita UAF di Venezia. He will present today's results on its research on the Mobilitas project. And for the one that doesn't know, the Mobilitas project is one of the past Hello. Oh, I think that we have missed uh, Antoine. Uh, 
but I think that we can hear you all very well, Mr. Nocera. Yes. So uh, if other participants could uh, confirm this, we can still go on with your presentation. Okay. So I was not, on, thank you. I was not aware if the, um, the break, the connection break regarded Antoine or myself. So, but thanks, thanks for this. So good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks a lot for for this uh, for this invitation that i have appreciated very much um actually this is uh, not the first time that i'm uh, recapping the results of the, the project mobilitas this is however the first time that i'm doing it not in front of a crowd but in front of a screen which uh, is actually quite annoying to myself and hopefully not for the people that will have the patience of listening to me in the next uh, 15, 15 minutes or so. Um, uh, I'm speaking about uh, a quite successful project. Um, I do not understand why it, the, the ring bells. I'm, I'm quite sure that, I, that my time is not over yet. Um, however, um, I'm, as any academical, I will start by recapping the, the research question. So what is what does it mean to, to take care of tourism mobility in Mediterranean areas? Well, it's, uh, it's quite a complicated one, actually, because we have one, one common feature that um, tourism uh, seems to be highly beneficial for, for local communities um, in terms of financial impacts, as well as uh, it has a, a quite a negative impact uh, for due to the, um, the, the economic impacts. Uh, but it is the, the only good news in, uh, in the screen as we have many differences that make the, um, the problem quite, quite complicated, I would say. Um, I have recapped the, the most important uh, ones that are um, the external costs that have been produced by tourism are different for the different areas. So some suffers about congestion problems, some about pollution, some about um, noise and, and so on. Then we also have an heterogeneity in the panel. That means that it is quite tough to speak uh, about the concept of about one concept of uh, a unique uh, Mediterranean touristical city. And furthermore, we are generally in different states of the Union. And so the laws are quite different. And uh, also the habits of the inhabitants tend to be quite different. So it is a quite tough panorama that um, in which Mobilitas has tried uh, to, to, to say something, I would say. Um, this is uh, the project, the project Mobilitas in, um, in a nutshell. Um, Mobilitas is an acronym that uh, stands for mobility for nearly zero CO2 in Mediterranean tourism destination. Uh, we're dealing with uh, a project worth more or less 2.5 million euros. Uh, the project started officially in November 2016 and ended in July 2019 with uh, a reasonable delay of three months due to mostly due to, to bureaucracy. Um, we're dealing with a MED project that belongs to the group natural and cultural resources that involved uh, nine municipalities coming from seven EU countries and one university. Um, and well, we had addressed the, um, the issue of tourist flows and their environmental consequences, particularly focusing on the CO2 um, deal, which is quite innovative, I think. Um, when we we have written the, this project, I know that I'm recorded, but I, I can whisper you that I was convinced that the um, uh, possibilities of for this project of, of getting financed were really tiny. I was very uh very glad that i i make a, a wrong um 
prediction about this because I said this was uh, a project that has um, uh, generated some very interesting conversation. The partnership, as I said, involved, involved different states. We were masterfully led by the Regional Development Center of Cooperation in Slovenia. Um, the partnership, as you may see, involved the three Italian partners, two municipalities and one um, and one universities. Then we had uh, two Croatian uh, partners. Then we had uh, Malta, we had Cyprus, we had uh, uh, Energies 2050 of France and also the municipality of Pirius that um, was representing Greece. So quite um uh, a widespread uh, a widespread one what we have done in the in this project we can i i know that i must um uh, limit myself to 15 minutes so i think that this is what we have done nothing really innovative uh, we have collected data we have uh, made an audit report and then we have made different scenarios about different things to to try to understand how if and how much uh tourism behavior could um influence CO2 emissions. Um, what we have done, we have fostered um, fruitful conversation that have uh, led to, um, to, to uh, write or co-write um, nine plans. Nine were, were planned within the project and nine have been finally achieved. Um, as said, many interesting conversations were done uh, within this project in order to uh, to help the different partners uh, to achieve this uh, this result. Uh, many studies have been done. Uh, I know that uh, Mr. Paulo Saric will will speak after myself. He will give you um, some some details about uh, what we have uh, we have done in in Zadar. Um, the testing of sustainable mobility plans brought to interesting results for the city of Dubrovnik that is uh, highlighted here. And also as a second results, we have tested IT tools. Uh, three have done particularly, one has, has been done in France in the, um, in the Riviera, one in Zadar, and then the third one in, in Piraeus. Um, we have uh, realized apps and uh, that work and that continue working quite quite well to the best of my knowledge uh, also we have done uh, uh, some electrical mobility solution uh, we have realized one in misano adriatico real uh, near uh, in the nearby of rimini so in the adriatic coast of italy one we have done in um, in cyprus um, some we have realized some new bus station for for a bus line connecting the coastal city of Limassol with the, the inner of, a, of the island. And then the third one that has involved e-bikes was realized in the French Riviera. Uh, these are pictures that, that show that I'm not lying. Um, furthermore, we have realized this uh, handbook on sustainable mobility and med area. We have recapped the most of the conclusion for a larger crowd. Uh, people interested can refer to this email address info at agenziapianostrategico.it. And I'm, I, I'm sure that my good friend Valentina Ridolfi will take care of any request that should arrive to this. Um, uh, to her email address. Uh, I think that you can also find the a copy, a free copy of this handbook uh, in the in the Mobilitas site, but I'm not sure. But however, the the email address is the safest way uh, to for the interested guy to to get this this handbook. Um, as Mobilitas was is also is not also only an acronym but also a latin word that stands for mobility we have also thought something out of this project uh, and with my research team we have realized uh, three papers that have been published in consequence of this project um, the first one was presented at the 20th uh, conference of eurogroup of transportation in budapest in 2017 
we have been um, the title as you may read is policy strategies for the mitigation of ghg emissions caused by the mass tourism mobility in coastal areas we have dwelled upon in this paper we have dwelled upon the concept of mediterranean cities um, if it were uh, useful to refer as a single one or uh, which kind of specification uh, should have been considered to to the different to the different cities. Um, it was um, really a pilot paper for the first time. We we were speaking. We have heard in the literature the concept of Mediterranean of Mediterranean coastal city. Uh, we have developed uh, the concept uh, a little bit, and uh, we have written uh, this second one: a tool to support uh, transport decision making in tourist coastal areas. We have referred more in um, our line of thought in terms of policies. Um, we have uh, developed a method to select the most appropriate measures included in five categories for, for coastal areas and also presented an application to a partner city. And then I'm very proud of this one because this um, uh, International Journal of Sustainable Transportation belongs to the second quartile of the um, of the transport journal in in the world it has uh, an impact factor a little bit higher than two uh, which is relevant in in transport research and uh, here we have dwelled upon the three corner of the iterations climate change tourism transport we have seen that in literature only the or generally it is um, it is considered pairwise, so only climate change tourism or tourism transport or transport climate change. We have tried to make a three-cornered interaction. We have dwelled consistently upon this method and after a quite long uh, revision uh, of, this, of this paper, you may read here that this uh, Paper has been received on the 15th of May 2019 and it has finally accepted only on uh, 27th of April 2020. So the reviewers have um, had many points that have um, uh, consented us to improve the, the paper consistently. Um, I think it's, um, it's quite a good one and obviously it is also available for you at any request. Um, I think that the, the presentation of the project may be over now, but I'll allow myself to speak. No, sorry, I have forgotten this. This is, um, this is um, still in motion. We are, um, uh, we are promoting uh, an MSc thesis on uh, the solution of the traffic problem of three uh, Dalmatian cities. Uh, Zadar, uh, Split, and, and Dubrovnik. Um, uh, two very skilled uh, students of our university have decided to, to do this, this work. This is ongoing and this should be over in March. We have also asked the cooperation of, um, of the University of Zagreb. We are also involving the local partnerships, uh, sorry, the local stakeholders. Uh, many thanks to, to Paolo Saric for his help. Um, and we are dealing with the, the solution of the traffic problems that have been um, that have been presented to us during this project and during uh, a couple of our of others that I'm dealing with as a co-I. Um, so I'll allow myself to, 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 to speak one more minute to, to say something about the possible role of the research center within the Interreg project. This is something that has been disputed, that it is currently disputed. Um, my point of view is that it could be useful to have uh, research centers and universities within partnership because um, we have seen within this um, uh, this uh, this project that we can offer uh, some competencies that are not generally available at um, at the level of um, of the single unit uh, we have also developed quite intense um, uh, relationships with uh, with uh, some administrations 
that have, have led to, to both research, to, to both um, interesting results. I think that um, it is something that could be that could be fostered, um, and I think, oh, I also think that um, dealing with some applied research uh, for universities should be included in the in the so-called third mission. So I'm I'm really favorable uh, to 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 this um, inclusion and. Uh, Obviously, I'm looking forward to new interesting um, cooperation possibilities, if one. I hope that I have not bothered you too much. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Nasera. Uh, there is a question from Christos jo Jolindasis, which is, uh, which parameters should be taken into account in decision making in coastal areas regarding transportation? Well, this is a very good question, but I do not have a very good answer about this because, as I said, um, the um, coastal areas are very different from, from each other. And so uh, I would say that depends from the specific coastal area. What I may say is that generally the most important problem is to get, um, is to get budget because uh, we have uh, um, demonstrated that we can create considerable economic benefits for the community. And the presentation of Mr. Cabell has, um, has shown uh, it. Uh, I agree with his most points, but however, we, we may have some, some budget constraints, some that could limit the, um, uh, the ideas and the possibilities that you may have to solve problems. So uh, actually, I would say it depends from the specific coastal area, um, and it's it's not possible to give uh, an answer in uh, in general terms. And if I could just add something, there is various pioneer cities that will present their solution that will go in just uh, in the second period of this webinar, and they they also try to make participatory process in order to. Um, which is how to change this decision making, but it's just a kind of short teasing for the second part of the webinar. But maybe there is another question, and I will not uh, stay that long. From Luke Dempsey. Um, what is the question? Oh, sorry. Um, sorry. The question is that you mentioned in the beginning the fact that Mobilitas operates in various places, which various different local habits. How have you found that working in operation, do local habits change perception, perceptions of global mobility solutions such as e-bikes, bike share, etc., etc.? It certainly does. But however, we I would be curious to test what kind uh, the the real impact of the solutions that we have achieved during this project. Um, the problem is that it is quite tough to uh, to talk about tourism during these days. Um, I think that we should wait. I hope a couple of years until this pandemic is over to really test the um, the, the impact. Uh, of the solution that we have proposed uh, on the on the communities on the uh, on the administrations and uh, on okay on the communities that were included in uh, in this project i also see a potential for the generalizations of of the solutions that we have developed uh, but also this theme uh, should wait for better times ahead i would say Okay, thank you very much. We will now um, go into the second period of the webinar, which is uh, the presentation of uh, each solution developed by Pioneer Cities. And we will start by a municipality that was part of the Mobilitas project that was previously presented. Uh, and the municipality, it's the, mobility, the municipality of Zadar in Croatia. And the presentation will be done by Paolo Sarish, a project manager at the Zadar Country Development Agency called Zadra Nova. Uh, OK.
Okay, hello everyone. Uh, I hope that everyone can uh, see my shared screen. Uh, as uh, Mr. Clemon already said, my name is Paolo Saric uh, and I was the project manager of the Mobilitas project. And uh, I will present to you the solutions uh, made for both uh, city of Zadar and Zadar County during the implementation of the project. Uh, I will start with some basic information about uh, the Zadar and about the Zadar area. The town itself has uh, 75,000 inhabitants and it he uh, heavily relies on the tourism. As you can see from the numbers, uh, the numbers are from uh, 2018, not from uh, 2019. Uh, the town had almost 2 million overnight uh, stays during the year and uh, 542,000 arrivals. Uh, that means that uh, there is a huge influx of tourists, especially during the peak months of the tourist season, uh, June, July and August, uh, that uh, simply boost the population of the town and create immense pressure on the traffic infrastructure, especially in the city centre. Uh, the city itself is concentrically built, uh, with the old town being the city centre with almost all key institutions, businesses and uh, landmarks for tourists to see. Uh, almost every tourist that comes to the either city of Zadar or the Zadar area comes to the peninsula, comes to the old city center at least once uh, during their stay in Zadar. And uh, during the summer months, especially on at the end of June, at uh, the start of August, it sometimes takes you five or ten minutes to walk uh, across the town bridge that is 100 meters in length. Uh, if you try to find a parking place in the uh, peninsula, especially during the summer, it is mission impossible. Uh, you have to circulate uh, the peninsula, you have to circulate the old town walls, and uh, you cannot find a parking place in probably 30, 40 minutes or even an hour that uh, obviously creates uh, huge losses in the economy. Uh, the traffic jams are constant during the summer months, but they also occur uh, between uh, spring and uh, late fall. Uh, it is very hard to find a parking place uh, when you need to go to the, to the town uh, to do some business. You need to go at least one hour uh, before to find a parking place, which is uh, <laughs> and very much which creates a huge problem, especially knowing that the Zadar is not a huge town. It uh, takes you, let's say, five or ten minutes to cycle from one place to another, let's say 20 minutes to walk, but it takes you 30 minutes to go there by car. Uh, the problem is there are no parking places, that there is not enough parking places in the city center, and obviously the huge uh, traffic congestion reduces the quality of air. Uh, here you can see the picture of uh, Zadar Riviera, which is uh, unlike the city of Zadar, longitudinally built and it spreads uh, from uh, island of Vir or peninsula of Vir as, as it is connected with uh, the bridge uh, to the mainland uh, until the Biograd on the south, that is, let's say, 40 kilometers of uh, relatively densely uh, built areas and uh, these places uh, attract the most number of uh, tourist arrival during the summer and each and every one of the tourists come to Zadar, come to the city center uh, and that creates a huge pressure. Uh, this is a short um, uh, presentation or short picture of, about the transport system in the city of Zadar. Uh, as you can see, uh, the port is uh, located, one of the two ports, is located in the city center and actually that is a line uh, that uh, has uh, that's the busiest line in Croatia with almost uh, 2 million of uh, passengers every year the uh, ferry line uh, Zadar Preko uh, as uh, on the other side of the town as Preko literally means other side is an island of Fugian uh, which also attracts a lot of tourists obviously during the summer months and uh, you can imagine uh, what uh, type of congestion uh, that uh, uh, traffic uh, 
uh, puts on the city center. You try to go on an island or you, re you return uh, from an island to the city of Zadar and the ferry port uh, was uh, located uh, in the city center that uh, does not have a uh, good infrastructure to handle that kind of traffic. Uh, two or three years ago, the traffic was, uh, the ferry traffic was moved on the port of Gazhanica, uh, which is uh, the port you can see on the uh, right side of your screen. But uh, the boats still come to the old town and uh, there are five or six uh, lines, uh, different lines, different boat lines that come to the city center of Zadar that creates uh, a huge, uh, huge pressure on the traffic infra infrastructure in the city. We, uh, we try to solve that problem um, using uh, multiple, multiple solutions. Uh, some of them include uh, bike sharing, as we have uh, put uh, four or five bike sharing stations that are placed uh, on the key strategic locations in the city of Zadar, like in the mine, like uh, near the main bus station at, at uh, the entrance of the old town, uh, near the hotel resort, uh, which you can see on the left side on your screen, and uh, near the one of the most populated neighborhoods uh, called the Billy Brig, which uh, has one seventh of the city population. Uh, in order to solve the problem, uh, we had to collect data, as uh, Mr. Silvio Nocera already mentioned. And uh, then we created uh, a strategic document, uh, the study of uh, cycling traffic and infrastructure in the city of Zadar. Obviously, we need to collect data, then we created the study, and then we upgraded the app as uh, I will speak in the next minutes. The study itself uh, defines measures for improving the cycling traffic in the city of Zadar, and it is consistent with the master traffic plans on both national, regional, and uh, municipal level. Uh, the study of cycling traffic and infrastructure in the city of Zadar is part of a larger uh, sustainable urban mobility plan uh, that is currently a work in progress in the city of Zadar and it uh, obviously specifies uh, and focuses on the difficulties in the cycling traffic. It uh, defines improvements, improvements uh, to be made in infrastructure, services and communication in order to promote uh, citizens and the tourists for using the bikes. Uh, it also increases the capacity uh, of the infrastructure for greater use of the bikes as it uh, defines the key problems and offers the solutions uh, to solve them. And uh, in the process of creating the study, all key stakeholders uh, like uh, representatives of civil societies, uh, representatives of tourist agencies, uh, uh, public uh, bodies in the both town and on the county level, uh, universities were involved and uh, obviously a uh, pool was made uh, in order to test and to see what, what are the key, key findings that uh, should be uh, capitalized upon. Uh, this is the proposal of the new cycling network in the city of Zadar. Uh, currently, Zadar has only 14 kilometers of cycling uh, paths, and uh, this proposal, after this proposal is uh, finished uh, infrastructurally, the, the total length of the cycling uh, lanes will be 70 or 80 kilometers. Uh, the main problem was that when the city was reconstructed after the war, after the Second World War, uh, when it was obviously almost totally destroyed by the Allied bombings. Uh, while the new roads were constructed, absolutely no one uh, took care about uh, the weight of the, of the roads and uh, no one cared about the cycle traffic. And now it is very, very hard uh, to improve that conditions. It takes a huge amount of money. Uh, and this is, let's say, um, some um, medium solution uh, in order to provide a better situation for the cyclists in the city of Zadar. The key uh, for this uh, proposal of the cycling network is the network around the old city center, around the peninsula, that uh, should be close to all uh, traffic, to all uh, 
automobile traffic uh, in the next five or six years after uh, most of these infrastructural improvements are created. And uh, obviously we need to uh, create some uh, alternatives for uh, the citizens and for the tourists in order to motivate them uh, not to go uh, by car on the old city center. Uh, a few parking lots will be created, parking garages uh, on the outskirts of the old city center. And from then on the bike sharing stations uh, will be put in order to ease the access to the key points in the old town center. The second step that the Zadar County Development Agency, Zadra Nova, took uh, during the implementation of the Mobilitas project is uh, the upgrade of the mobile app Zadar Bike Magic. Uh, the application itself uh, that works both on Android and iOS platforms already uh, existed. It was created in early 2017, uh, but unfortunately it uh, failed at, the, it, at uh, its launch. Uh, to reach the target audience. Uh, due, uh, as part of the implementation of the project Mobilitas, uh, we upgraded the application. Uh, we created some kind of uh, promotion uh, with uh, tourist counties uh, and tourist councils uh, in the cities of Zadar and all other units of local self-governments, obviously in uh, we coordinated that efforts with the media. And after its upgrade, the Zadar Bike Magic application defined the 86 standardized cycling trails. I believe that that number is a little bit higher now. It is 94 or 95 uh, because the cycling trails are upgraded uh, and updated regularly. Uh, and it defines uh, three thousand uh, kilometers of cycling routes in the Zadar County. So it does not encompass only the cycling paths in the city of Zadar, but in the county itself. Obviously, it is an uh, all-around guide for both tourists and local citizens uh, promoting bike use, because the point of uh, this application is not just for you to download it uh, and uh, see how to go to, from point A for, to point B. It also uh, encompasses a lot of different things. You can see all uh, cultural landmarks that you could visit. Uh, you can find bike sharing stations. You can find uh, shops to repair your bicycles. And uh, you can find uh, uh, a place for you to stay or, and, or to rent a bike. Uh, the application is divided into three categories. Uh, family friendly category that covers the, begin the beginner level routes uh, suitable for draw rides and uh, sightseeing throughout the Zadar area. The second category is suitable for, let's say, fit cyclists or those who regularly use the bikes, and uh, those pets tend to combine longer rides uh, while spending time uh, with friends. And obviously, the most demanding category is a real test, even for the fit cyclists. As, uh, some of the routes uh, are more than 100 kilometers uh, in length, and some of them are even uh, part of uh, uh, Zadar, uh, um, Zadar bike race uh, uh, that uh, took place, obviously, each, each year. Uh, the, pets, the pets itself, are uh, created in that way that most of them uh, start within a close proximity of one uh, landmark and it takes you to another landmark. The routes follow uniform and harmonized criterions and are taken into account the whole county as a destination as they pass throughout the areas of uh, several tour tourist boards. Uh, routes uh, are created in a way that they follow the same or similar terrain and uh, they try not to repeat themselves in order to get the best quality and diversity instead of uh, pure quantity. Uh, all routes that uh, begin in Zadar County and uh, they are classified for a particular type of cycling uh, while being designed to be primarily cyclically attractive. Uh, all routes are circular, meaning they uh, begin at the end 
at the same point while passing uh, through another uh, key points and uh, key landmarks in the Zadarov county. They are uh, classified according uh, to a strict book of standards using uh, both Croatian law and uh, the directives of European Union. Uh, here you can see some indicators <clears throat> uh, and uh, you can see the results of uh, the upgrade of Zadarbike Zadar bike magic application. Uh, before the upgrade, the highest number of uh, devices that simultaneously used the application was 226. And uh, the highest number of uh, devices, uh, Android devices, that sim simultaneously used the application after the upgrade is uh, 413, which is uh, the spike of 82.74%. Uh, the data clearly shows that the upgrade of the application had a positive impact on the usage of Zadar Bike Magic application and on the sustainable urban mobility. Uh, after the upgrade of the application, uh, we have uh, tested uh, our hypothesis uh, that the upgrade of the application will have a positive correlation to the usage of bike sharing stations. Uh, and we can see that uh, the number of bike, uh, bikes rented on the bike sharing stations put on the city of Zadar almost doubled in uh, 2019 uh, in, in regards to the 2018. Uh, the spike is huge and uh, obviously one part of that uh, can be uh, correlated uh, to the Zadar Bike Magic application, which also has the locations of the bike sharing stations. And uh, by scanning the QR code on the bikes, you can simply download the applications on your uh, smartphone device. Uh, here are two graphs that show the situation before and after. Uh, 205 usages of the application on the same day on August 13th in 2018 and 2019 and 413 simultaneous uses of the application after the upgrade. Uh, obviously, uh, there are still plans for the future in order to improve the application and the cycling traffic in the city of Sadar. Uh, an intensive media campaign is needed to ensure the visibility of Zadar bike magic in the future, because uh, as you all know, uh, you need to repeat the media campaigns in order to get the best uh, solution and to attract the highest number of, uh, uh, sorry, and to attract the highest number of users. And the, the campaign will be coordinated by Zadar County Tourist Board and Zadar County Development Agency. And it is envisioned uh, to start after the future upgrade uh, that will provide additional content to the interface, such as new cycling paths, even more landmarks to visit, especially in the hinterland, and widening the uh, additional services offered as a part of Zadar Bike Magic. Uh, thank you all for your attention. I'm free to answer all questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Sarich. We're waiting just two or three minutes to receive the question because we're a little bit late with our agenda. It's a kind of busy webinars. So we are waiting reactions. <coughs> oh, there is the one for uh, Christos Jovaldis. What is the expected impact of the construction of bike path on the use of other modes of transport? Is private car use expected to fall? Uh, yes, we have created uh, researches that show the model split of the uses of uh, each and the specific uh, types of transport. And uh, our plan is to reduce uh, the usage of cars by five to 10% in the next three to five years. Uh, and those numbers will be significantly higher in the old town center, which is uh, suffering from the highest uh, level of traffic con congestion because obviously we will not be able to go 
to the old town center by car and you will need to use either public transport or bikes. Okay. Thank you. Well, if there is not much more question, we will uh, pass to the, uh, second, the, the other the second presentation. As you know, dealing with the challenges posed uh, with the challenges posed by the tourism mobility is not an issue that involves one actors. So in the next presentation, Nicolas Canferla will present the low carbon transport plan in cruise destination that has been done in Ravenna, Italy. He will explain how the various actors worked together through participatory process. And Mr. Scanfella is the manager of the mobility planning office in the Ravenna municipality. Mr. Scanfella, the floor is yours. Thank you, Antoine. Uh, uh, good morning, uh, everybody. And uh, I share my screen for the presentation. Okay. Uh, the screen is uh, on. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you to uh, ETC team uh, for this invitation. I'm very happy to be here. And um, I hope uh, to be as clear uh, as possible because my, my English is not uh, so beautiful. Um, uh, a short introduction uh, of uh, uh, the uh, project. Uh, um, uh, Ravenna Cruise Terminal is located in Porto Corsini, a small village uh, with about uh, 15,000 inhabitants. The cruise terminal is located about uh, 15 uh, kilometers from the historic uh, center of Ravenna, where the main points uh, of uh, interest are uh, located. Now, uh, I'd like to give a general overview of the context concerning uh, cruise passenger flow. Number decreased by more than half, uh, even thought uh, the last year showed a slight improvement, uh, but uh, in this moment, uh, uh, the, it, it's a very problem to talk about the, the cruise terminal. And so uh, in uh, this slide, the summary of the traffic flow, uh, which uh, um, we detected uh, from March to August uh, 2017, our office uh, carried out a campaign to detect traffic uh, flow general by cruise tourism. We found out uh, that in uh, 2017, the cruise-related uh, um, cruise, uh, traffic uh, do not uh, significantly increase the volume of the general traffic compared to an average working day. The substantial change concern uh, the flow of EV good vehicle and buses during a cruise call, uh, going to about uh, uh, five to 10% of the daily traffic flow. Uh, the growth trend of Ravenna are not currently available um, and they are unlikely to be made available as they are commercial data. It is estimated that uh, 200,000 passengers a year in the long run, but in the long run, but not is, uh, in this moment, uh, obviously. Uh, negative uh, consequences and uh, negative impact uh, of cruise tourism have been uh, evaluated together with, uh, are evidently closely related uh, to each other. Absence uh, of an official coordination table for cruise tourism uh, stakeholder, the congestion of, bus, of tourist buses in Porto Corsini, uh, poor exploration of unconventional local tourist uh, offer that is not link, uh, linked uh, to UNESCO monument, lack of service in the passenger terminal, inadequacy of local public transport for cruise uh, passenger, low development of uh, bike trails uh, at the service of uh, cruise passenger, and problem of accessibility uh, for people with uh, reduced uh, mobility. And uh, um, uh, cruise passengers were not oriented to visit the naturalistic place uh, near the port. Uh, often um, uh, decided to stay on uh, often decide to stay on board. Uh, the crew, um, um, the, the problem of the crew, the crew are difficult to reaching the city or uh, uh, taking a short walk during the free hours. Um, 
When we were developing the local carbon transport plan, we conceived the plan as integrated in the general framework of the SAMP, the CUMP, and other instrument of the municipality planning. Uh, I would like uh, uh, briefly to describe uh, uh, you the methodology of our participatory process, a very important uh, process. Uh, given uh, the plurality and the mystification of the player involved, it became necessary to uh, structure the participatory process uh, at different times, involving a specific stakeholder in different uh, way. So we can distinguish uh, two types of actor institutional uh, or representative stakeholder, uh, individual subject, for example, cruise passenger and uh, citizen. A representative stakeholder have been involved in uh, three different moments uh, and a focus group and the face-to-face -face meeting uh, were held. And uh, the, second, uh, the single uh, subject with uh, interview uh, with the uh, option uh, opinion leader, sorry, and a geotagging uh, meeting and a questionnaire online and on site. Okay, this is the current uh, scenario summarized in the, this slide. Uh, we, we decide uh, uh, to adopt a feasible scenario, not to a visionary scenario, um, excluding uh, some ideas uh, too expensive or, or bizarre, um, like the extension of a railway line. In uh, uh, this slide, uh, the uh, core of the LCTP. Uh, in this general context, uh, we have uh, been defined uh, and shared with the stakeholder uh, three different uh, strategy. Uh, are the improving tourist accessibility to point of interest in the proximity of the terminal, of course, improving uh, urban quality in Porto Crucini, improving the environmental quality of connection between the cruise terminal and the center of, of uh, Ravenna. Uh, okay, uh, to speed up uh, the timing of uh, my presentation and improve the understanding of uh, the strategy and action, I would like uh, to show a, a video, also because uh, the video is a part of the communication to citizens, which has uh, been uh, given particularly importance. I hope... Uh... La città di Ravenna, dichiarata patrimonio dell'umanità, è una meta di grande pregio grazie ai suoi mosaici, agli edifici storici e alle riserve integrali che offrono paesaggi naturali unici e suggestivi. Dal 2011 il Terminal Crociere di Ravenna accoglie ogni anno numerosi croceristi, quasi 50.000 nel 2017, con l'ambizione che possano diventare circa 200.000 nel lungo periodo. Il piano di trasporti a basse emissioni, sviluppato nell'ambito del progetto Locations, nasce per far fronte alle problematiche derivanti dalla mobilità dei croceristi che in visita all'area Ravennate si spostano sul territorio dal porto alle zone di interesse. L'obiettivo è garantire a tutti la possibilità di muoversi in modo facile e sostenibile, abbattendo le barriere architettoniche, diminuendo le emissioni inquinanti e in un'ottica più generale migliorando la qualità di vita dei cittadini. Su questa linea il piano prevede l'attivazione di un servizio servizio di collegamento al centro storico di Ravenna, specificatamente dedicato ai croceristi con mobilità ridotta, che potrà essere effettuato nel lungo periodo anche con mezzi elettrici. Trasporti via mare a basso impatto ambientale invece sfrutteranno il canale Candiano, di interesse paesaggistico, collegando la costa direttamente con la Darsena nel centro città. Il piano recepisce il progetto, ancora in fase di definizione, del nuovo avamporto, che include interventi quali la realizzazione di aree di sosta per autobus e autoveicoli, di servizi marittimi e per la sicurezza, di aree verdi attrezzate collegate alla spiaggia e l'ampliamento dell'area campeggio. I passeggeri che preferiscono una pedalata all'aria aperta potranno usufruire del servizio di bike sharing. Appena sbarcati troveranno un'area attrezzata dove potranno noleggiare biciclette anche a pedalata assistita che potranno caricare nelle apposite colonnine. Il servizio informazioni, già attivo con i suoi operatori, è un punto di partenza per avere una panoramica sulle attrazioni locali. In più, i croceristi potranno consultare i totemi informativi dedicati ai principali siti turistici e alla rete di percorsi ciclabili che saranno posizionati sia nel piazzale del Terminal Crociere sia a Porto Corsini. Anche in città, in corrispondenza della piattaforma dedicata ai croceristi, sarà installato un totem con le indicazioni su come spostarsi a piedi per raggiungere i principali poli museali e artistici di Ravenna.
Per favorire l'uso della bici è stato sviluppato un piano della segnaletica che guiderà le persone che scendono dalla nave dal terminal crociere lungo i principali snodi e percorsi scelti nell'area del litorale. Le biciclette potranno essere dotate di rilevatori GPS che aiuteranno i visitatori nella scelta dei percorsi fornendo indicazioni su distanze, tempi di percorrenza e stazioni di ricarica. La visita dei molti luoghi di interesse naturalistico e culturale sarà facilmente fruibile grazie alla realizzazione di nuovi itinerari ciclabili e pedonali e con la nuova segnaletica al miglioramento di quelli esistenti. Attraverso la costruzione dei passaggi sull'acqua, una nuova pista ciclabile collegherà anche il terminal con il centro storico di Ravenna, interventi questi previsti anche dal piano urbano della mobilità sostenibile di Ravenna. Un piano particolareggiato sarà poi dedicato a Porto Corsini, con la previsione di numerosi interventi finalizzati a migliorarne la vivibilità. Tra questi, una riqualificazione basata sull'istituzione nel centro abitato di un'unica zona 30 che favorirà l'uso della bicicletta potenziando le connessioni tra percorsi pedonali e ciclabili e restituendo al paese luoghi sicuri e accessibili a tutti. Un piano pensato per rendere la mobilità di croceristi e cittadini più sostenibile, valorizzando le bellezze paesaggistiche locali, sviluppando la fruibilità dei punti di interesse del territorio con soluzioni low carbon che porteranno grandi vantaggi per l'economia, le persone e l'ambiente. Okay, uh, following the draft, uh, the drafting of the LCTP, uh, the major uh, of Ravenna signed a letter of commitment uh, of the implementation for the intervention and uh, the municipality of Ravenna has included found in the municipal budget to create two different steps of the low carbon transport plan in 2019. Uh, 130,000 in 2020, uh, 100,000. And uh, 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 the Mobility Planning Office uh, collaborated with the Emilia Romagna region for the planning of the Adriatico uh, cycle route um, uh, that connect uh, Trieste with uh, Santa, Maria, uh, Santa Maria di Leuca uh, in, uh, in this uh, map. And uh, the Mobility Planning Office included this forecast in the CUMP in this uh, cycle uh, mobility plan and the Italian state in August 2020 allocated found from the, for the construction of a national uh, cycle path on condition they were included in the mobility planning tools of the city. Of course, the city of Ravenna was uh, awarded uh, 800,000 with which uh, it uh, allocated uh, the construction of infrastructure for a part of cycle path between Porto Corsini and Ravenna and the connection between Porto Corsini and Ravenna is part of the Adriatic cycle route. So the LCTP is not complete with uh, a monitoring plan. Uh, this slide describes the scenarios and the result we want to achieve and the obviously the monetary plan and the uh, implementation uh, of the plan and the monitoring uh, of the implementation. A special part uh, uh, of the plan is dedicated to the estimation of the reduction of air pollutant emission. E-bike uh, are, uh, are already available, I think, to Sutra Project and Interact Italia Croatia. Uh, this is uh, the connection map in, in this slide. Uh, in this moment, uh, five stations with uh, 45 uh, e-bikes avail uh, available and a app for renting and checking uh, the available e-bikes. Uh, uh, finally, we uh, completed the sequence of link uh, between the three different European projects. I believe that a success factor of the location project and uh, uh, the LCTP was uh, uh, to connect the three different uh, European projects that contribute to achieving a single goal aimed at the developing sustainable mobility models. Uh, I'm finished and um, thank you for your attention. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, Antoine, if it's possible uh, for me, uh, and, uh, it's better for me, for my English <laughs> and for you, I think, uh, uh, to answer uh, uh, by the, the chat and uh, if, if uh, it's possible uh, uh, for me, it's better.
It's okay. okay. Fantastic. Thank you very much for your uh, presentation, Mr. Thank Stamper. you. Uh, oh, well, here is the first um, question. Should I choose the Did you see the question? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I answer to my chat. Okay. okay. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Antoine, I think we can go on since uh, Mr. Scanferla said he will answer by, by chat to uh, all uh, questions so that we will arrive. Yes. So we right. will pass to the to the other uh, Pioneer City. Yes, and that's the last one uh, presentation of the Pioneer City. As you probably probably know, pardon, the, World Tourist, uh, Organ the World Tourism Organization estimates that uh, tourism and mobility is responsible for 5% of the CO2 emissions and points out that the change in the style of tourism consumption is necessary also to meet the challenges of the climate change that present cities must face. So we'll assist now to the last uh, Pioneer City presentation that show uh, the way from a participatory planification to an electric mobility solutions. So for this presentation of the municipality of Retimno, we will, um, the, the two presenter, presenters will be Vasilis Mirio Kefalitakis, engineer and mayor advisor, and Natalia Kiriakopoulou, uh, survey engineer and former researcher. And uh, now the floor is yours. Hello, comrade. Now uh, we are very happy we are here. Thanks for the invitation. Uh, we start uh, our presentation with. Uh, a very nice video uh, about uh, Retimno. And then uh, we have the, our presentation. So, um. Με πολύ χαρά και υπερηφάνεια, ο Δήμος μας, μαζί με άλλους σημαντικούς Δήμους της Ευρώπης, συμμετέχουμε στο πρόγραμμα Civitas Destinations. Η σκέψη μας είναι να εξασφαλίσουμε σε όλους, τους κατοίκους και τους επισκέπτες μας, μια υψηλή ποιότητα ζωής. Βασικός παράγοντας της υλοποίησης των δράσεων του Civitas Destinations είναι ο συμμετοχικός σχεδιασμός. Ο Δήμος Ρεθύμνης κάλεσε όλους τους τοπικούς παράγοντες, ε, τους επαγγελματίες του τουρισμού και τους πολίτες και μαζί χάραξαν το μέλλον του τόπου μας. Εκπονήθηκε άρα το σχέδιο βιώσιμης αστικής κινητικότητας μέσω της συμμετοχής τους στη διαδικασία λήψης αποφάσεων. Έχουμε ήδη εξασφαλίσει την προσβασιμότητα όλων σε όλα τα δημόσια κτίρια και την ασφαλή μετακίνηση των πεζών μέσα στην πόλη μας. Χάρη στο πρόγραμμα αυτό, έχουμε σύγχρονα καινοτόμα εργαλεία που μας επιτρέπουν να χαράσουμε τη στρατηγική μας και την πολιτική μας με ασφαλή δεδομένα. Έτσι, Έχουμε εγκαταστήσει θερμικές κάμερες όπου μπορούμε σε πραγματικό χρόνο να μετρούμε τα κυκλοφοριακά φορτία πεζών και οχημάτων κάθε κατηγορίας. Με γνώμονα την ενίσχυση της βιώσιμης κινητικότητας, ο Δήμος μας για πρώτη φορά εγκατέστησε το έξυπνο σύστημα διαχείρισης της στάρνευσης με στόχο την εξυπηρέτηση των οδηγών και τη μείωση των άσκοπων μετακινήσεων με τα οχήματά τους στην πόλη μας. Φροντίσαμε να εξυπηρετούμε τους ανθρώπους με αναπηρία, ιδιαίτερα τους τυφλούς, οι οποίοι μπορούν να κυκλοφορούν στην πόλη μας 
και να διέρχονται και από τα φανάρια με απόλυτη ασφάλεια. Είμαστε υπερήφανοι που μπορέσαμε να έχουμε ένα σύστημα που με ένα απλό αλλά πάρα πολύ καινοτόμο τρόπο μπορεί μέσα από ένα ρολόι χειρός ο τυφλός να παίρνει τις κατάλληλες οδηγίες ώστε με ασφάλεια να απολαμβάνει τη θάλασσα χωρίς να χρειάζεται τη βοήθεια τρίτου προσώπου. Προσοχή παρακαλώ, σήμα κινδύνου. Καταφέραμε να δώσουμε άλλη μια δυνατότητα στους ανθρώπους με αναπηρία να απολαμβάνουν και εκείνοι τις θάλασσές μας. Έχουμε κάνει ειδικά μαθήματα στα σχολεία μας για την οδική ασφάλεια ώστε τα παιδιά μας να μάθουν το σύγχρονο τρόπο μετακίνησης που είναι το περπάτημα και η ήπια η κυκλοφορία. Δηλαδή να κυκλοφορούν με ποδήλατο και πατήρι. Τέλος, εκεί που έχουμε κάνει πραγματικά άλματα, είναι η ηλεκτροκίνηση. Είμαστε υπερήφανοι που πρώτοι στην Ελλάδα κυκλοφορήσαμε ηλεκτρικό λεωφορείο σε συνεργασία με το ΚΤΕΛ, δηλαδή το φορέα της δημόσιας κοινωνίας στην περιοχή μας. Είναι ακόμα η αρχή. Αυτά που κάποτε σκεφτόμαστε ότι ήταν όραμα, πλέον είναι υποχρέωση. Η υποχρέωση απέναντι στην ποιότητα ζωής των πολιτών και στην προστασία του περιβάλλοντος. Έχουμε ήδη εγκαταστήσει τρία συστήματα φορτιστών σε διαφορετικά σημεία της πόλης και πολύ σύντομα προχωρούμε στην εγκατάσταση και άλλων, ακόμη και ταχυφορτιστών. Φιλοδοξία μας είναι όλοι που έχουν ηλεκτρικά αυτοκίνητα, ποδήλατα, μοτοποδήλατα, να μπορούν γρήγορα και δωρεάν να φορτίζουν τα οχήματά τους και έτσι δίνουμε ένα κίνητρο για τη χρησιμοποίηση αυτής της ήπιας και σύγχρονης ενέργειας. Είχαμε και την υποστήριξη του Υπουργείου και του Υπουργού κ. Κεφαλογιάννη και δεν είναι τυχαίο ότι το Ρέθμνο μεταξύ των μεγάλων πόλεων της Ευρώπης πήρε το δεύτερο βραβείο για την καμπάνια του στα πλαίσια της Εβδομάδας Ευρωπαϊκής Κινητικότητας. Με το πρόγραμμα Civitas Destinations ο τουρισμός αναβαθμίζεται καθώς μιλάμε πια για βιωσιμότητα, για περιβάλλον και για προσβασιμότητα σε ό,τι αφορά τον επισκέπτη αλλά και τον οικοδεσπότη Δήμο που τον υποδέχεται. Θέλουμε να είμαστε μια πόλη πρότυπο και πάνω σε αυτό δουλεύουμε όλοι μαζί. to our presentation. So I'm Natalie Kiyakopoulou. Uh, I work in uh, the programming uh, department in uh, Retina Municipality. And uh, so, Retimno, uh, a medium-sized Mediterranean city located uh, on the northern coast of the island of Crete in Greece, uh, is a popular tourist, uh, tourist destination which accommodated more than 500,000 visitors annually. Also, uh, 1.5 million visitors explore Retinal Municipality on day tours uh, and cruises uh, due to its um, archaeological landmarks, uh, remarkable beaches, traditional villages and uh, famous gastronomy. In, uh, since uh, 2007, Retina Municipality has set uh, the vision of a sustainable development. Retina's uh, policies and strategies are always aligned with sustainable mobility to serve the needs of uh, citizens and tourists. So Retina, Retina's vision uh, is to be 
a great sustainable mobility model and uh, not only a remarkable tourist destination. It's important to refer that uh, in uh, 2007, Rethymno was among the first Greek municipalities which conducted the sustainable mobility plan. In uh, 2020, this plan uh, updated to um, a sustainable urban mobility plan uh, to cover the needs for both citizens and tourists, covering the whole municipality area and aligned with uh, the new legislation about the sun. Uh, this was uh, through Civitas Destinations project. Uh, also, uh, we are glad that uh, our mayor, Mr. George Marinakis, uh, is a member of uh, Politica, the advisory committee of uh, Civitas Initiative since uh, 2018. So, okay, let's uh, talk about uh, electromobility, which is the topic of uh, this presentation. Electromobility over time in Retina Municipality. In uh, June 2018, uh, we purchased the first municipal e car to serve the needs of Municipal Technical Services Department. And uh, we installed three double EV charging stations. Uh, these charging stations are located in public space. Uh, they have a charging power of uh, 22 kilowatt and uh, they are the, you know, the only free of charge in the uh, regional uh, level. In uh, May 2019, uh, as you saw in the video, we have the first e-bus uh, registered in Greece for public transportation uh, in Retina. Uh, it's accessible to disabled people. Uh, we have uh, each route is different during the summer and winter uh, period in order to cover the needs of uh, tourists and citizens uh, respectively. <laughs> And uh, it's very important to refer that uh, it's also free of charge. In uh, July 2019, um, the electric policy of Retimno attracted a very important private investment of a life company. Uh, and so we have an e-scooter sharing system. Uh, we are happy that uh, this is a result of a fruitful private and public uh, cooperation. In August 2020, we have installed, we installed the first fast uh, EV charging station. Uh, it is also located in uh, public space and it's free of charge. Uh, we're talking about uh, 50 kilowatt DC and 43 kilowatt AC. Since uh, September 2020, uh, we have an e-bike sharing system, uh, which is in combination with the installation of a photovoltaic shelter to charge e-bikes batteries. Free of charge, public space, as all the others. And uh, we have um, e-bikes and e-scooters. We purchased 20 bikes, 15 e-scooters and 20 scooters. To reach, uh, we, we distributed uh, the scooters to the school community. And uh, we use uh, and the e-bikes and e-scooters uh, are used by municipal uh, employees uh, to go to, to cover their needs, their daily needs uh, in commuting. Uh, as you can see, uh, we have a different kind of funding. We have a Civitas Destinations, Horizon. We have ERDF funding, private investment. It's very important. 
and uh, we have always uh, the promotional of electromobility and uh, raise awareness uh, campaigns in each step uh, in order to enhance um, the output uh, of uh, our uh, activities. Uh, we have test drives, editorial, social media posts, public events, leaflet uh, postcards. Uh, it's a very essential step uh, to gain the citizens' uh, support. We can uh, picture this. Here is the, uh, the e bus. Uh, and then the charging point. Uh, the second one is the first uh, EV charging point. Uh, some statistics uh, says that um, from the very first day, uh, we have uh, 2,038 charging sessions and the total energy consumption is uh, 1,285. 45 kilowatt per hour. The e-scooter series systems, uh, the first month uh, of the, the first month of use, we had uh, more than uh, 25,000 rides. Uh, it was an initiative uh, not only for Edno, but also in the regional level, and I will say in the national level, as uh, in the same period that uh, we had the launch of the e scooter service system in Edno, we had it also in Athens and in uh, Thessaloniki. The e bike sharing system, uh, you can see the photovoltaic shelter. And in the second picture, uh, you can see the red uh, are the batteries of the body bikes. Uh, they are uh, charging in this picture. And then uh, the e-scooter and the e-bikes uh, that we have here in the technical uh, department of the municipality. And now the floor to Ms. Mr. Mirjikafaldakis to talk about the demonstrator project. Yes, uh, good morning to everyone. I am Vasily Mirjikafaldakis, advisor to the mayor, responsible for the European uh, projects uh, running by our municipality. Uh, I would like uh, to present you uh, the demonstrator to be implemented in uh, uh, the implementation of the InCircle Indirect Med project. Uh, as you can understand, we always want to go forward, a step forward. Uh, the whole idea was generated by the already installed uh, photovoltaic uh, shelter uh, for the municipal e-bikes. There is a limitation over there. Uh, the limitation is that uh, the photovoltaic shelter is uh, charged in batteries. So, the, as soon as the batteries are fully charged, the power produced uh, is lost. So, what is the idea of uh, our demonstrator? Uh, we are going to install two solar carports, one uh, for four cars and uh, one for eight cars. Uh, the produced energy will be used uh, uh, for uh, the e electric vehicle charging stations. But uh, uh, these shelters, uh, these carports will be uh, introduced to the grid by net metering. So actually the whole power will be uh, used for the demands of the e charge charging stations or any other power demands. Uh, the installed power of the two shelters will be approximately 30 kilowatts peak. That will be produced around 40, uh, 45,000 kilowatts per year, uh, kilowatts hour per year. So theoretically speaking, uh, these two carports will be allowing for our municipal car to cover approximately 225,000 uh, kilometers. Uh, 
the installation, uh, the demonstration is also including the installation of an extra EV charging station. So uh, theoretically, uh, after uh, three months, uh, our municipality will have five EV charging station. And also, uh, we are going to install tech, uh, a charging station uh, for uh, 10 micro mobility vehicles, e-bikes and e-scooters. Additionally, we are going to install uh, information signs about the demonstrator. Uh, during the uh, design stage of the demonstration, we, have it, we had to encounter some major issues. The first of all is uh, solar car ports, uh, when uh, introduced into an urban area, could have a, a negative visual impact. Uh, also, there are limitations imposed by the existing electricity, electricity grid. Uh, the total uh, investment would be around 68,000 uh, euros. And uh, we are going to monitor the number of uh, the vehicles to be charged at the charging stations, the kilowatt hours supplied by, uh, by the charging stations, uh, the kilowatts hour produced by the photovoltaic panels, and uh, theoretically, and ho we hope that the number of the electrical vehicles uh, circulating in Rethno will be increased. Uh, what we believe, we, we believe that will be the positive side effects and communi uh, continu continuity of the measure is uh, the expansion of the existing charging infrastructure. Uh, Rethmino will be keeping the lead as a lighthouse example for other Greek cities to empower the sustainable and eco-friendly profile among tourists. Uh, the citizens will have the possibility to evaluate, uh, evaluate uh, the, the option to install a private uh, carport in their premises. And uh, we expect that private companies will invest in electromobility, uh, such as uh, car rental companies. <coughs> so we, we want to unlock more and more funding as we work under an integrated plan in sustainable development. Uh, during the demonstrators project, we have been uh, discussing with uh, key actors and we have involved a, a significant number of uh, uh, stakeholders like the tourism department, the chamber of commerce, the associations of uh, uh, soilist waste management, technical universities, the hoteliers and restaurants association, travel agencies and so on. Uh, so uh, we want to close our presentation with the logo of the Interreg Med Insert project. Be part of the circle, be part of the solution. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much for this presentation. Um, is there any question to the Redino municipality? Oh, well. Two questions. The first of all is a thank you for your presentation. Rethymo actions to assist vulnerable people are commendable. I would like to, have to ask if there is any lessons for potential replicators of this electromobility related solution. What should they take care of? Citizen stakeholder engagement, spot the right action to install charging station bus routes, political will, others? Well, it's a uh, Big question. Uh, yes, uh, first of all, the, the most important thing is uh, the motivation to the citizens and uh, the stakeholder engagement. Uh, uh, it's very difficult to spot exactly the, the right location to install the service stations, uh, bus routes, uh, but uh, uh, we are a pioneer city. We are evaluating the first results, and uh, it, of course, it will be a co political commitment or, of how we are going to continue in the future. Uh, um, now, about the other question about the uh, electric uh, solutions, the waste, uh, 
uh, with uh, the battery packs. Uh, yes, we do have a, a, a plan for waste disposal. Uh, our city is uh, involved in uh, battery uh, uh, recycling, so all the battery packs uh, produced by the eco mobility solutions will be gathered by the municipality and will be handled with a proper way as we do from uh, 2014. Okay, great, thank you very much. Uh, you. Well, as you know, the time is running, so we may make a short um, conclusion to this webinar through the intervention of Mr. Cabell. And I don't know if he's here he, yet. <clears throat> Well, if it's not the case, we will just skip it. <laughs> well, well, well. Well, in fact, um, yes, time is running, so we, we need to conclude this webinar. First of all, thank you to all the speakers for their presentation and for the support, the support provided by our colleague from Area Science Park. Uh, thank you also for the attention and for all the questions raised during this uh, webinar. You will all receive soon a recap email with all the key informations inside, such as the link of our uh, Medurban tool platform. And also, and it's the most important things, the um, contact of the help desk system. The help desk system is in charge of the call for sustainable, for sustainable urban transport implementing cities. So you will receive it, all this info within the day. Uh, you can still register to our two last webinar that uh, will take place uh, the two next uh, Wednesday. So for the 18th of November, the thematic will be sustainable urban mobility planning approaches in Mediterranean, Mediterranean cities. And for the last webinar that will take place in, the 25, in November 25, the thematic will be electromobility urban planning impacts on technology trends. I wish you all a very good day and I hope to see you soon in our webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you all. Bye.